after a really long sort of period of time, I'm talking six or seven months, reflecting on this new vision from Salesforce that we've been presented. And then having finished the 10 minute summary that I did um, earlier in the week, I think I've arrived at a point of reflection where I think I have a perspective to share. And the, the, the title of this video is not clickbait. I genuinely think whiplash is a good metaphor to use to explain not just, I think, my processing of this new vision, but I think generally, actually, the circumstances I think we find the community in, in response to this feature, based on the comments that I've seen. Okay, so this is a bit of a complex video. No tableau in this video, no screen shares, just me talking and no edits. We're just going to go right into it. Now, I want to start by responding to one thing, which is someone made a comment that they appreciated that I was still trying to be positive and optimistic about the new features and that, you know, as a content creator, that I must be, you know, just trying to keep a brave face to some of these changes, even though truthfully, I think people think that you know, these changes might not be ideal for their ecosystem or their own context. I can't really speak on behalf of those people, but I think I wanted to touch on this point about, you know, why I make content. It's not, I'm not, I don't make content to, I don't know, do Salesforce uh, like a, a service. Um, I make content because I'm part of what I think is a feedback loop that keeps the community going. Just to explain this, when I learned Tableau, I consumed content from respectable members of the community. Many of them are Hall of Fame visionaries, but there were also many people who were just good at the products. They weren't ambassadors, they weren't visionaries. To, to this day, I still hold many of those people really high regards. They taught me everything I know about um, the product and analytics in general. And part of sort of the reason I run this channel is to continue that loop. I hope there are people who watch this channel, get into the product, and then go on to do good things with Tableau or um, realize it's not for them and move on, but I help them get there faster or discover someone else who makes content as a result of starting off by watching videos on this channel. W w whatever way you sort of go on into the community, this channel is here to support that. So when I make a video about Salesforce stuff, I'm actually always playing a neutral role. And the neutral role is this. I'm here to show you what's new, how it works, but I'm not here to tell you what to think about it because as a as someone who makes this content, I respect your ability to make your own judgment. I'm not going to tell you what to think. Yeah, like when I make a video about Salesforce or Tableau, whatever it is, I make them because I think they're important touch points. Back to the <laughs> purpose of this video, whiplash. I think this is a useful metaphor for understanding a feeling that I've really struggled to put across in various discussions with Salesforce, in various discussions, in videos, in various discussions with community members. We all have this feeling that something has changed, something is changing, and it's the obvious thing, you know, Salesforce acquired Tableau, but the really tough thing is to really place that feeling, to, you know, just, you know, be able to point at it and say, this is what it is. And I think Whiplash describes it really well. And the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to show you, I'm going to, I'm going to talk about two examples specific to Salesforce in order to highlight this. Okay. The first one is around the way products are presented. Okay. I would say there's five states to, let's say, showcasing a product. The first one, probably you never see, or you never know you're seeing it because it's not intended for you to really experience as an end user. What I would call this is a, a mock or prototype showcase. So basically what you do is you build a prototype, that looks like the real thing, but then you give it the interaction elements that allow it to behave like the real thing. This is what tools like Figma are really good at. In the past, I know Tableau used to use a tool called InVision. InVision, I think, shut down and they moved everything over to Figma. So the way this would work is that if you wanted to sort of prototype a feature, what you'd actually do you'd build a mock version in Figma and that's what you would pitch to sort of get the feature built. And then that would allow you to say, look, put that in front of, you know, 10 people and say, hey, if you could do this, click on that, what do you think? What that allows you to do is before you even build anything, you can get sentiment, you can get ideas. And then those ideas inform what I would call like an MVP. So that's sort of your first level of a showcase, showing a potential customer, a potential idea, but in a completely conceptual stage, okay? 
The next one is you've actually got some developers, they've built what is the MVP, and now you're actually using it, you're trying it, you're literally using the software. But this again is not typically a public thing. This is typically the internal team that are doing this. They're literally working on a prototype. It's buggy as hell, it crashes, it's nowhere near sort of customer ready, but it's on your laptop. You can start to sort of figure out how the interaction will work. What other things have you not thought of? Where are the bugs? What's causing all these challenges? That starts to come out. That's sort of stage two. Stage three is what I would call, okay, you've got that prototype into a place where you're happy to let someone else drive it. So you put it in front of someone else, but you're supervising that person, okay? So you're either looking over their shoulder, or you're on a web share or something like that, and then they're trying it. Stage four is about clearing out those quirks, clearing out those challenges, those bugs that meant you had to look over their shoulder. And it's actually what I would typically call a beta. And people are very familiar with this. Betas are designed for lots of people, maybe a thousand people to try something out. They start to get generalized feedback. By this point, you should be already comfortable letting the feature out. What you're looking for, things you haven't thought of and quirks around performance, presentation, UI, UX, all of that kind of final polish that you'd put to stuff that happens after this step. Then the final stage is, okay, this feature is ready. Let's go to production. <clears throat> Since Salesforce acquired Tableau, I've noticed that the stage at which we see things has fundamentally changed. We see them at what I would call two very distant stages. I feel like we see a lot of things that have the polish of a finished product, but they're in fact this prototype, this mock, okay? And then at the same time, we see them almost too early, <laughs> which is which sounds like a really crazy thing to say, but because we see them too early, but they're presented as final visions, what you miss out on is this sort of opportunity to really sort of influence that vision, influence that journey, influence sort of the outcome. What I struggle to sometimes place is who is showing the features. So when you see the showcases, the best way to think of this is primarily led by product marketing. Showcases are designed to invoke a certain feeling, a certain idea. And if you're Salesforce, obviously interest in the product and, you know, bottom line, you know, you know Salesforce is a business and they want some money. The, 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 the showcase is supposed to instigate discussions from customers to say, yes, I would like to move in that direction with you. I think that's going to be great for my company. But, and here's the big but. Tableau used to do this very differently. And I say Tableau because at the time it was a separate company, Tableau the company. Tableau did something this completely differently. When Tableau did these demos, and this is just from recollection, I might be wrong, so hit me in the comments if, 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 you, if you've experienced this. I felt like we saw betas at the same phase that we are seeing mocks from Salesforce. So what do I mean by this? What I mean by this is that we would see an actual working beta, an internal beta, a working beta of the product in front of us as the sort of first tranche demo. And the reason I know this is because there used to be this capability called a feature flag. And the feature flag is essentially probably still there. It's a way in Tableau of enabling certain features because what actually happens is that the code that you're pushed actually contains future capability in it because it's hard to take out the code that you're developing for the future from the current build. You're constantly building on the code base. So it actually makes sense that there are parts of the software that aren't switched on until everything is in place. So there used to be a mechanism called feature flags where you could just switch on certain parts of the feature capability. And so you'd actually be given um, instructions on how to do this and you would be able to enable specific feature flags. If you use Tableau Server, the way you could you know, see these feature flags, you go into Tableau Server, there's a YAML file in there and the YAML file just has a list of flags. Those flags are features. So you could take those flags, go back to Tableau Desktop and then enable the same feature in desktop because of course some of the features had to be present in both platforms. So that's a bit of inside baseball as to sort of how that used to work. What I'm saying here is though that back in the Tableau day, we saw a ton more of this kind of stuff. And it also meant that unfortunately you'd see stuff in the product that never got shipped. And that absolutely happened. I've seen that with uh, dashboard grids. <laughs> this was demoed once. We've never seen it. And to this day, you know, the grid alignment, the automatic snapping, that's the specific thing that never got shipped, but, I, you know, was available in the product through a flag. That just got removed and it's disappeared and it's never going to be there. But it was built. It was in the product and it worked as far as I was aware. Never had a bug. Just did not get shipped. You know, going back to Tableau, back in the day, 
we saw a lot more demos at this, I think, <clears throat> more, it was further ahead, but it was a reality. It's really did the genuine thing, okay? With Salesforce, I feel like we see way too many decks and way too many <clears throat> mocks. And I know they're mocks because they come many months, many months before the actual beta arrives. And then the things they're showcasing aren't even available in the in the in in, in what we see as the beta. So you'll see a mock, you'll see a presentation from a keynote. You'll have seen the keynote seven months ago. We're now coming to the next keynote. <clears throat> and the tough thing about this is that the beta will show features further back than the mock that we saw, if that makes sense. It's a little bit, it's just a really hard to place, a really hard to describe. But this sort of sudden change leaves this feeling, this whiplash feeling that I think, again, is really hard to place, but I genuinely think like it leaves something. If you're really dialed into the product, you're dialed into seeing things at conference. Actually, to be honest with you, conference was a big audience. Back in the day, 10, 15,000 people went to conference. I know conferences are small in a post-COVID world anyway, globally around the world. It's not just the Salesforce or Tableau, but you know, it was actually quite meaningful to, to have people see these features working in the product, but that's what was being showcased, actual working code in the product, rather than uh, mocks and PowerPoints showing you like what could be possible. And, and then the smaller side to that is that it actually leads into my next point, which is, um, <clears throat> let's say the presentation approach, like who's talking about the product? Um, I said before it was led by product marketing. Throughout the whole entire process, I feel like we see a lot less product managers as well. We see a lot more product marketing professionals, but product marketing is not the same as product management. And I feel like Tableau had a heritage in having product managers showcase the product, not product marketing. And you might ask, how are they different? It's really hard to explain, but again, this is a good example of Webplash because I feel the difference. I just can't, I can't tell you what it is. But the product manager, in my gut, I felt, I think had a better sense, better intuition for what was really going to hit home about the feature. But with product marketing, you get the thing that execs want to hear, <laughs> which sucks a lot of the time. And I know it's weird because the execs pay the bills, but it creates this huge disconnect in the product. I call it sort of the intuition gap, right? And so it's actually like a, a cycle. It's a very vicious cycle because you hear a feature and then you hear someone from product marketing talk about it, they talk about it. And then as they're talking about it, you start to ask yourself, does, does, does this person, is this person a real day trammer? Because they're not talking about this feature in the same way I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it in this context here at work, but they're talking about it in this very sort of generic sense. So you start to question like, hmm, do they, do they understand me? Do they get where I'm coming from with this feature? So you ask a question, you go in, and then sometimes products and marketing team then go into this sort of mode where they're trying to understand the voice of a customer. The voice of a customer's actual phrase that's used inside of Salesforce that speaks to how they collect information about customers and the features they want. So they get into this sort of mode where they go into the voice of the customer and they go into sort of a listening mode. The problem with that, though, is that in this listening mode, you're not actually answering the question that the analyst is trying to answer because you, the, the marketeer is trying to gain insight that they don't feel they have or they need to have or they understand already but want to hear it in the voice of the customer. But you as the analyst just want to know the answer. You just want to get a little bit of faith and trust and know that, okay, this person that's telling me about this thing genuinely knows my pains and feelings. And you don't get that. You don't get that from the marketing. I certainly don't get it from the product marketing on the Salesforce website or for Tableau or anything. I feel like a whole bunch of personality just been completely lost in that whole approach. So that's an opinion, by the way. It's not necessarily like a, a fact. Many people will have different opinions. If you go back to <laughs> if you go back to the Tableau days, I, I just genuinely feel that, you know, when a feature slapped, it really slapped because they knew exactly what was going to slap about it. I don't think we have that same intuition in Salesforce at the moment at all. It's a little bit disconnected. Now, this could be for a bunch of different... I don't think it's it's a people thing. I think 
everyone at Salesforce is really smart. It's just a little bit of a, I think it's an it's a byproduct of Salesforce itself being such a large company, so many structures, and having very so many filters involved in the process that by the time something makes it all the way through, even though what you poured in was gold, it still comes out with this you know somewhat off gold kind of polish to it. If that makes sense, it's still great look, great polish. It's very refined, very precise wording. But it's just off gold a little bit, you know, whereas what you poured in was a little bit was a little bit richer, you know. So, again, this sudden change, again, whiplash again, it's just this sort of it's a very stark difference. And so if I go to my notes here, what was I going to say next? It actually brings me to this point around whiplash, this sort of the, the thumbnail of this video, like whiplash. If you look up the uh, definition of whiplash is not actually the action of changing qu things quickly. Changing things quickly has got a different meaning. I don't know what that word is off the top of my head right now. But whiplash is specifically the injury that comes from a sudden change of direction, right? <clears throat> if, if I sort of finish this video on this point, whiplash is where I think we are in general in response to some of the Salesforce um, announcements. That doesn't mean any of them are bad. It doesn't mean any of them are wrong. Some of them could be great. And in the future, I might be sat here saying this is one of the, some of the best changes that, that were ever made to the platform. That still does not change the fact that there has been a lot of changes of direction. There has been a lot of renaming. There has been a lot of space. And there has been a lot of lack of clarity on, you know, what is Tableau Core? What is Tableau Next? What's happening to cloud? What's happening to prep? You know, all of these sudden things, oh, that metric's gone. The, the Tableau sort of narrative thing, gone, even though that was only introduced two months ago. Metric's gone. Here's Tableau Pass, you know. All of these changes, like clockwork, boom, like a lot of things being trialed in real time, almost on the product itself. Meanwhile, you're an analyst. Your whole world, you know, isn't changing that fast at all. So to you, the relative perception is this sort of erratic back and forth. That causes this whiplash that I think people are experiencing, but they can't place that feeling. And I genuinely think that's sort of what summarizes the comments. If I look at my comments, you do see people conflicted, really positive about some of the directions, really nervous about what it means for them. You see a lot of the push for AI, really positive about how it can change your workflow, really concerned about what it's going to do to their careers. You see that again. Boom, bang, boom, bang. You see Salesforce's sort of change in terms of product mix, uh, sudden change in licensing, sudden change in, in pricing. These things will have to change, of course. The, um, the world doesn't stand still. But there's always an opposite and equal effect to the end user who is in a context that maybe is not changing so fast. And so to me, I think that's what's causing this effect. So yeah, I think that's it. We're really curious to know what you think. I think perspectives really matter in this discussion. And yeah, this is a different kind of video. No editing, just talking to the camera alone in my room. <laughs> a bit sad, really. But yeah, <laughs> that's sometimes how content creation goes. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.